and welcome to Rotted Reviews. And today I'd like to take a look at a movie that was just released for rental or purchase on Amazon Prime, the 2021 movie Steuben County. Now there's a reason that I chose this one. It's not a typical horror film. I think if it was uh, have a classification to it, I would say that it falls under the genre of thriller more. But honestly, I really don't like to get bogged down in those kind of intricate details. For those of you that know me, I'm not a big fan of the conversation of is this horror or not? It never really yields anything productive in my opinion. Suffice it to say, I thought this one was interesting and it had a blood splattered character on the front cover. Plus, up until recently, I lived in Steuben County. Turns out it was a totally different one, completely different state. However, it was enough to draw my eye and think, hey, Steuben County, give it a whirl. And give it a whirl I did, and I'm kind of regretting it. Written and directed by Sean Mannion, this movie follows the character of Eddie, played by Toller Wolf, as he's seeking refuge. He's experienced some hardships, he kind of had a little bit of a mental break. There's uh, some things that kind of get alluded to and fleshed out during the course of the movie, but suffice it to say, he is spending time at a lake trailer uh, with family members. He's trying to unwind, he's trying to collect himself, kind of regroup himself and figure life out. So he's taking the summer to do just that. And the real kind of plot of this, if there was one, comes into play when he's kind of dealing with his cousin and her friend, and there's a creepy teacher, or at least he sees him as creepy, that is inviting them out onto the boat towards the end of summer. And something about this teacher, like, uh, it just rubs Eddie the wrong way. Something about it, you know, the rumors and so forth that people have told about him, the fact that he apparently at one point married a former student who had since grown up and met him after the fact of, you know, the student-teacher relationship. But even so, that was enough to splinter in Eddie's brain and make him think something. I would say the worst, except it never really gets spelled out. It's always implied and never actually gets fleshed out just what Eddie thinks this character is capable of. So as I've alluded to, I really didn't care for this movie. And the fact of the matter is, this was an hour and 18 minute long runtime, and it was a very long hour and 18 minute. And at multiple points, I just kind of clicked on the player UI and just was flabbergasted that I wasn't further along in the timeline than I actually was. See, the whole problem with this movie, well, it has a lot of faults, but I think more than anything else, it comes down to the editing. This has some really bizarre editing choices to it. There's a lot of abstract nature to this, and I know that I've been a big proponent of show, don't tell, but this is one of the rare instances in which the movie decides to go ahead and take the leap and do neither. Anything regarding the characters, the plot, the resolution, the overcoming the conflict, anything along those lines up until the final conclusion and even further right until the end credits is just alluded to. I finished watching it and honestly that was a bit of a struggle. I do personally have the opinion that I will not review a movie unless I finish it all the way to the end credits. That's just a big pet peeve of mine is when a film critic walks out of the theater and still decides to go ahead and write a review. My mind, that's not done. So I stuck with it and I still can't tell you what the fuck happened in this movie. It has abstract images. It bounces back and forth in time. It puts dialogue from one character and brings it back into a different character's mouth. It has all sorts of bizarre imagery to it. And it's kind of all over the place. And while some people might see that as genius, I just see it as a fractured mess. And I think a lot of that kind of comes down to if that was the only only thing about it, if it was just alluding to things and it was still kind of artistic and had some good editorial merit to it, I could possibly accept that and see it as maybe a good movie that I just need to kind of flesh out more. But there were some glaring editing mistakes going on here. There was one scene in particular where the cousin came up to Eddie and said, hey, you want to go for a walk? So out they go for a walk and nothing happens. They're only out for a brief moment when she turns to him and says, hey, you want to go for a drive? And then they go for a drive and then they wind up at the teacher's house and so forth. So what the fuck was the point of the walk? There was nothing that happened there. There was maybe one or two lines of dialogue. I honestly don't even remember at this point. I'm going to have to check that in the post-production of this video. But they went for a walk for no reason other than to, for her to suggest they go for a drive. So why not just suggest they go for a drive? It's one of those things that was just this superfluous scene that by any account should be left on the cutting room floor. And there were a lot of mistakes along these lines. This really could have been tightened up and really cleaned up in post-production, but then you would have wound up with a runtime even less than an hour and 18 minutes, which is honestly kind of short aside from the fact that this movie dragged on. And one of the biggest reasons for me that it dragged on is because, well, 
It kinda did. There were so many filler scenes taking place within this movie. I can't count the number of times we watched Eddie drive. Silently. With nothing happening. Him just driving. Mouth agape. This entire movie was pretty much just a close-up of Eddie's face just... Every once in a while, some scenes were kind of interspersed that actually had some dialogue and actually had some things happening, but they were rare and they were always preceded and followed by Eddie Mouth Agape. And that was one of the roughest things about this. Not only did this movie drag, but every single time, especially in the last third of the movie, that we had a scene of Eddie driving Mouth Agape, I just wanted to scream. I was literally getting angry at this movie, just saying, do something, actually show something, tell me something, have a story that delivers something for the love of God. And instead, Eddie, mouth agape. And all of that, all of it might have been somewhat forgivable if we had actually had a conclusion that was clear, straightforward, and told us what the fuck we just watched. A lot of times we'll have abstract imagery in a movie and it'll just bring it home at the end until finally we have the keystone that unlocks the puzzle of the entire previous hour and a half. That's not the case here. It just sticks with the abstract imagery. It doesn't show us anything. It doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't clearly deliver any storyline or message. And we just kind of get hints of some abstract aftermath. One character apologizing for something. Police tape drawn. Why? I don't know. It never actually clearly showed anything that would involve the police. It kind of alluded to some, but it didn't actually show us anything. And then again, we had a character speaking lines that a previous character did in kind of an abstract, odd way. And then the end credits rolled. That was it. I don't know what happened. Anything regarding this teacher, anything regarding the Eddie character, anything regarding the cousin or her friend or the grandma that he was living with, none of it was explained. And this is an extremely vulnerable position as a critic to be put in because it just opens up the floodgates for comments like, oh, you didn't get it, and so on and so forth. And yeah, I fully grant that maybe I didn't pick up all the pieces of this movie. Maybe I had mentally kind of emotionally or emotionally checked out about the halfway mark so that I just wasn't even really that interested anymore. But I really can't claim a whole lot of fault of my own on that one. If a movie wants to actually engage me to the point where I am willing to solve the puzzle and get emotionally and mentally invested in finding these pieces and putting them together and hypothesizing, it has to grab me a whole lot more than Steuben County did. I think it was a movie that was competent in a lot of ways, but just never really fleshed it out. And the odd, bizarre kind of editing style was one of the key contributing factors of it. It's just a shame because I kind of got the feeling that there was a nugget of an interesting story here that could have been told a million times better than it actually was. As it is, I can't recommend this movie, especially for a rental fee, and I think that should wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your time. If you like this, please click like and subscribe. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.